Number 36, letter A. Find the maximum number of lines per centimeter. Diffraction grading can have and produce a maximum for the smallest wavelength of visible light. So since we're dealing with maximums, guess what? We're going to be dealing with this constructive formula that we have been for the past 34 problems. So this is D sine theta. I'm not even going to mention what the variables mean anymore because, uh, I, yeah. we got to solve this for D, all right? And the reason why we got to solve it for D is because D will tell us now the distance per line. We then have to inverse that, though, to find the maximum number of lines per distance. So just keep that in mind. So the goal then would be if I know I want to find a maximum number of lines, okay, and this term is then the reciprocal of D, then what I really need to do is minimize. Okay, min, mim, minimize, min, amize. Okay, minimize D. So in order to minimize D now, I'm going to choose the smallest value for M, which would be the first order. The wavelength I can't choose, I mean, it's it's giving me the smallest wavelength, so that's what I'm gonna use, right? It just so happens that that'll minimize it as well. So this is 380 times 10 to the minus ninth, that's in terms of meters. And then if I wanna minimize D, I gotta maximize the denominator here, and the maximum value of sine is when the angle is 90 degrees, this would become a one. So in other words, this is just equal to then 380 or 3.80 times 10 to the minus seventh meters, okay? Now this is basically the number, uh, or this is, yeah, this is the number of meters basically per line. But what they want us to now find is the number of lines per meter, per centimeter. So flip this around now. So you're gonna get for every one line, there are 3.80 times 10 to the minus seven meters. So now do that division in your, well, actually before you do the division, why don't we just get rid of the meter? Meter on the top, centimeter on the bottom. For every one meter, there's 100 centimeters. And now go about and do this calculation. So this is basically now one divided by, parentheses, 3.80 times 10 to the minus seventh times 100, close those parentheses, and there's your answer. So this is about 2.63 times 10 to the, fourth okay uh, lines now per centimeter there you go so about twenty six thousand three hundred letter b would such a grading be useful for ultraviolet spectra all right so to answer this you need to know the spectrum here for ultraviolet light in terms of wavelength it goes from 100 nanometers to about 300 and 80 nanometers all right it changes ever so slightly i mean depending upon the text you might be or the reference table you might be using so um, in order to answer this question, what we do is we use this constructive formula, all right? So D sine theta is equal to M lambda. And what we do is I'm gonna solve this for sine of theta. And the reason why is this, that sine of now theta is equal to M lambda over D. The reason why is because we know something special uh, about the particular value for sine of theta. This value has to be between zero inclusive and one, okay? If the value is between here, if the value of this then is between zero and one, we're good. If the value is greater than one, we're bad. So the idea here to test this is to basically now take, so we're gonna do a little test for the ultraviolet. So M will be one, the wavelength here, plug in the 100 nanometers, okay? 100 nanometers. 100 times 10 to the minus ninth. Then divide that now by the D value we found before. Okay, that's the diffraction grading, right? 3.80 times 10 to the minus seventh. Now, when you do this, right, notice here, sine of theta will now be equal to, um, so if you just look at this, the numerator is smaller than the denominator. All right, it has a more negative value, right? So uh, therefore, uh, what we can do is we don't even need to plug it in, but you can plug this in. It'll be some fraction. Or in other words, this thing will work out to be, this whole thing here will work out to be uh, less than one, okay? So since this is, I'll call it less than one, we're good, okay? Like I said, the sine value has to be somewhere in between zero and one. So something less than one, but greater than zero is a fraction. That's good, all right? Then what I'm gonna do, is I'm going to now take the maximum value of 380, okay? So get rid of this, 
it's now 3.80 times 10 to the minus 9th. When you now do this out, okay, or excuse me, it's not 3.80, it's 380 because this is times 10 to the minus 9th, sorry. So that's 380 times 10 to the minus 9th. When you plug this into the calculator, now it becomes exactly equal to 1. Now that's okay because sine of theta, I said before, has to be between 0 and 1 but inclusive. I should say it goes from 0 to 1 inclusive of both 0 and 1. So this is good. But if you notice, we're right at the max now. What happens if I start plugging in now values greater than 380 nanometers? Right, it starts to go bad. So the visible light, not necessarily that great. Okay, uh, but that's what we solve for. We solve for the smallest value for visible light. You know, so hopefully that makes sense. So the rest of the visible light, not too good. Infrared spectra is even longer, has a longer wavelength of visible light. This is going to be way larger than one now. So it's not going to work for then, for letter C, it ain't going to work at all. It ain't working for infrared. It ain't going to do it. All right. So, guys, thanks for tuning in. Hopefully that helps. And uh, I appreciate it. Thanks so much for watching. we got a whole bunch of other problems out there for you. Thousands of problems, actually. All right. In other classes as well. So we solve specific problems, too. So if you have, you know, let's say you're not using the OpenStax books, go download it. It's free. Find a similar problem to the one you might be having if you're not using the OpenStax books. Um, all the problems are basically worded very, very similarly amongst the textbooks. So you'll be able to figure out how to do it by watching those videos. Um, yeah, we'd love to help you out with more. That's really what it comes down to. All right. Thank you very much.